this morning because you are here for somebody already and therefore by your presence let there be a change of level for somebody in this service as you receive your word the word of next levels let it bring about change of status for somebody in this service let shame be turned to glory let luck be turned to abundance let every satanic obscurity receive the light of his word this morning thank you heavenly father blessed be your name in jesus mighty name we have prayed only that person for next level shout a big hallelujah put us between your hands together for jesus as you have your seat on this next level service somebody is moving from tenant to become landlord yeah. only that person should say an amen. amen anything we call it that is what it answers somebody you are living loneliness to be married this time yeah. i don't know who i'm talking about this morning someone in this service you are living the realm of begging to giving Somebody, you are living the realm of scarcity to surplus. Amen. Only that person is saying an amen. amen. The word of God is a game changer to any circumstance of life. The word of God is a game changer. Every time the word comes, change comes. Every time the word comes, change is born. Today, somebody's change is coming in the name of Jesus. In that scripture, in Psalms 105 and verse 19, until the time is what came, is until the time the word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Until the time the word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent for him and lose him, and the, even the rulers of the people, and let him go free. But that was not all. He made him Lord over his house, a stranger, a slave, and ruler of all his substance. He, to bind their princes, he gave him authority at his pleasure and teach his, his senators wisdom. Israel also came. Now, somebody by this service, where they thought you will be, suddenly you will change level. There are some people, they have marked you with something negative. They have always said, look, it will always be there. Anywhere that speaks low to your redemptive dignity, I see you changing level this time. Can you imagine they came to look for blind Bartimaeus by the road to Jericho? The following day after Jesus had encountered, he had encountered with Jesus, they couldn't find him again. This service will bring about a change of address for your good. Ah, uh, we had a great service in the first service, and I recommend that you receive that word again as you go and uh, to our social media handle. It was brought powerfully to us by our resident pastor. In this service, this second service, we like to be reminded the prophetic theme is I am redeemed a wonder to my world. I am not a wanderer. My God is a wonder God, so I'm a wonder child. My God is a wonder God, so I'm a wonder child. Job 9, verse 10. He does wonders without number. He does no wonders without number. Today, God will do wonders in your life. Job 9, verse 10. He does wonder without number. God will do num wonders in somebody's life here. Which do it great things. What will God do in somebody's life here? I did not hear you at all. Past finding out. They will not find. That's why it's science and wonders. It is beyond scientific studies. It is beyond human handling. He does wonder. He says, which great, great things past finding out. Yay. These great things are wonders without number. As you are recovering from one testimony, you'll be sharing another testimony. Because that is the God we serve. Is a God of wonders. You are not meant to be a question mark. You are meant to be a wonder mark. A wonder mark of exclamation of joy. A wonder mark of exclamation of glory. I see you becoming the same in the name of Jesus. 
in our first service we looked at the theme for this service operating in the supernatural operating in the supernatural to operate means to make happen to operate means to engage making the supernatural happen that means in this kingdom the supernatural is not a coincidence the supernatural can be walked and reworked. It can make to happen again and again. In Mark 10, I mean Mark 16 and verse 20. It says, and the Lord was walking with them, confirming his word with signs following. That means when you engage the demand of the supernatural, as a child of God, having a supernatural root, then the supernatural must answer. In your finances, it will answer. In the work of your hand, it will answer. In all consigning your health, it will answer. In the name of Jesus. May I remind us that the supernatural is the answer to every human limit. Every time man comes to a wit end, supernatural is required to cross over. Every time man comes to the limit, Supernatural is required. And what is the supernatural? The supernatural is the natural nature of God. The supernatural is the natural behavior of God. In John 3 and verse 2, the Nicodemus said to Jesus, We know you have God. How do we know? He said, No one can do this thing except God be with him. The supernatural is the natural act of God. In Psalms 1 oh, 103 and verse 7. It says, it shows his ways unto Moses and his act, his act unto the children of Israel. But this morning I'd like to you to know every child of God is accessible to his ways. And you cannot know his ways and not command his act. The act of God is a supernatural. The word you're receiving this morning is to enlighten you the more on the ways of God. That means as you assess the ways of God, you command the acts of God. By the word of the Lord this morning, I see you commanding the, way, the works of God. Can you see the disciples? The 12 of them. Jesus, for 12 years, he was teaching them the ways of God. He said, the kingdom of God is like this. He kept telling them the ways of God. After they have known the ways of the Lord, then the next thing, they began to manifest the act of God. Acts 4 and verse 13, he said, when they took knowledge of Peter, and John, they knew they were unlearned. They were not in any of their schools. But they took knowledge of them because they have been with Jesus learning the ways of God. Today, by the ways of God being known to us, you are returning as a supernatural agent. I say your supernatural source will speak for you. What is a sign? Somebody may ask. What then is a sign? You hear, I am created for signs and wonders. So what is a sign? In Isaiah 1 and verse 8, it says, I and the children that are given unto me are for sign and wonders. Are for signs and wonder in Israel by the Lord of hosts who sits in Mount Zion. What is a sign? Somebody may ask this morning. One day God looked at Moses and said, Moses, I will give you a sign to prove that I am the one that sent you. And what did he do? He said, Moses, in, Je in Exodus chapter 4 and verse 2, he said, what is in your hand? He said, and the Lord said unto him, what is in thy hand? He said, it's an ordinary rod. He said, put it down. And as he put it down, it's a miracle took place. Now, after that miracle took place, in verse 17, he said, with this rod, you will do signs. Somebody will live here and do signs. So by that scripture, a sign is a miracle. A sign is a miracle. When signs and wonders take place, it means miracle have taken place. Have taken place. For instance, you are in your shop. Nothing is selling. But you return with this understanding that this time, this thing must sell. And all of a sudden, what couldn't sell for five months? They sell it within one hour. 
That kind of sign will answer for somebody in this service. You are returning as a sign. A sign can be defined as an act that cannot be explained by law, yet cannot be denied. That's a sign. It cannot be explained. You cannot put it in a computer and read it in a computer. You cannot explain it by man's knowledge, scientific knowledge, but yet you cannot deny it. In John chapter 9, from verse 1 down to verse 31, it's a long read. There was a man that was born blind, and Jesus saw him. And the disciples asked, Who sinned, the father or the mother, that this guy is born blind? And Jesus said that the glory of the Lord may be revealed. That the signs and wonder may take place if you like. Then Jesus ministered to him. And after he got his eyes open, everybody around them. You know, many people deny signs. They deny one. They say there's no more miracles. Some people say that. And this man began to see. And the people came and met him. In fact, they met his parents first. They say... He said, go and wash in Shiloh. And the man washed and came back. He said, this, they asked his parent, is this, was this your son that can now see? The parent said, well, instead of you to stone us, go and ask him. When they asked him, he said, I don't know what happened, but I was blind. Now I can see. I don't know your explanation. One thing I know, I was blind. Look at it. He said, I was once blind, verse, verse 11. And he answered and said, a man that is, called, that, that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Selo and wash. And I went and I washed and I received my sight. Then said unto him, where is he? And he said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that was the after time was blind. Then, if you read further, and it was the Sabbath. They, when they asked him, he said, one thing I know, I was blind, now I can see. Just like they will not know, your position is changing. They may not know the process, but they cannot decline, decline, I mean, de, 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 decline the conclusion. They may not know how the process is, but you are changing start to this time. If that person is here, let me hear that and say amen. Therefore, someone here, a sign and a wonder will answer for you. It is beyond natural law. Natural law is under five senses. Even your experiment in your lab, it has to do, go through observation of what you see. If you can't see, you can't do experiment. It has to go by five senses. But listen to me. The supernatural science goes by faith. In 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7, it says, we walk not by sight, but by faith. And what does faith do? Faith connects you with the language and the behavior and the act of God. Faith connects you with the language, the behavior of God. One day, Jesus calls the fig tree. And that is in Mark 11 and verse 20 to 22. They say, Master, the fig tree you spoke to yesterday is dry. And Jesus replied in verse 22. He said, have God's kind of faith. That means this is how the ways of God is. The ways of God, how can man be speaking to an inanimate thing? That is how faith and the supernatural operate. By your faith and by the law of faith, I see the supernatural answer in your life this time. In Acts 4 and verse 16 and verse 17, a notable miracle was done, saying, what shall we do to these people? To this, to, to, to this, uh, what shall we do to this man? He said, for indeed, a notable miracle has been done by, by, by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. You know, there are some people, they say a lot of things about you. And they have concluded you in a bracket. But all of a sudden, God just brings you out of the bracket and they find you at the top. 
That will be your story this time. I said, that will be your story this time. Can you imagine Joseph woke up in the morning? When, just one night, one night, the Bible says in Genesis 41 and verse 14 to verse 16, the king sent for him and called him out of the dungeon. If Joseph was just released from the prison, he would have still been looking about for where to go. But he was released with honor. And if you read verse 44, the Bible said, the king said, look, Joseph, under your authority shall my people be ruled. I don't know who is looking for that kind of change of story. Supernaturally, God is changing your status this time. Signs, what is signs? Signs are the acts of God that causes men to wonder. The acts of God that causes men to wonder. That is, the people that have concluded you in the negative, they wonder, wow, that's what happened to that blind man. They came to meet his parents. They say, is it true that Jesus made you blind? This man can now see. You see, let me tell you the truth. You are not in a kind world. The world wants to keep you where they have always known you to be. But somebody here, you are changing status this time. They have always known that you are going to be a tenant. They have always known that you are going to be under. They have always known you are going to be a failure. But God is changing somebody's position this time. I had a testimony of a man of God. His wife gave birth to the first child under six months. And they had to put the child in the incubator. He gave birth to the second child under six months. And this second child could not comprehend things well. In fact, in the school, is the last in the class. They're just managing it to be in the class. All of a sudden, the teachers came and said, excuse me, we want to talk to you about your son. And he told them, what are you telling me about my son? I already know my son. It's not comprehensive. Then, the Holy Ghost spoke to the man. He said, can you begin to speak what this boy will be? And the boy now came and said, Daddy, I want to be a pilot. The father bought him a plane. So when he saw the plane in the class, when they tell them, what do you want to be? Someone to be a lawyer? I said, I want to be a pilot. That's the last in the class. And the man of God started laying hands on the boy. He said, you will be what God says you will be. You will become what God says you will become. You are the head and not the tail. You are on top and not in the middle. And began speaking and speaking. The boy graduated with flying colors. He went and went to the pilot school and became a pilot. When he finished becoming a pilot, he said, no, I want to fly pil commercial plane. In fact, big planes. He's a pilot today. I don't know what is spoiling around you. You are the final authority to the signs and wonders in your life. That shop will not die. That business will not die. That far marriage will not die. I speak life to it in the name of Jesus. Say with me, signs and wonders. Answered by my authority. Because I am a child of signs and wonders. Only that person say that, amen. In Zechariah 3 and verse 8, he says, you are those that are wondered at. He said, hear now, O Joshua. He said, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit be before thee, for they are men wondered at. They are men wondered at. Behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. This time, you will be that person to be wondered at. So, signs and wonders is waiting for you. That's what that testimony is saying. That thing that looked like dead and broke and, and already has concluded by women as limited. You can change the order because you are a sign and a wonder. That reminds me of the testimony of the great legion. Kenehi Egan. Kenehi Egan was told, you, it was not going to be, see his 16th birthday. 
Yet, he, was in, he has been in bed for about 16 months. At the age of 14, he was in bed. They clean him. They do everything for him. Then, Kenny Hagen, his, his pastor came to the house and prayed a prayer of death. He said, Lord, comfort his family that's about to lose their child. His mother was there. His grandmother was there. So when he heard, he said, I'm not ready to die now. And his grandmother gave him a New Testament Bible. And that Bible, he began to open the Bible. And he found Mark 11 and verse 23. If you shall say to this mountain, be moved and be cast to the sea, you will have whatsoever you say. And he began speaking, I will leave. I will declare the words of God. I will still go to the shopping mall. I will still go to school. And as he was saying it, one day, when that faith was fully born, because faith is a process, he staggered and walked out of paralysis. Then I went to be with the Lord at 87. I don't know who you are. Every satanic limit around your finances, around your destiny, around the work of your hand, I see you bringing about time, signs and wonders now in the name of Jesus. You know what this means? That means that which is not a final say over your life. The occultic forces are not a final say over your life. Not even the teacher in your school. Not even your teacher is a final say. One time, the richest man, the fourth richest man in Australia, his name is Stephen. The teacher drove him back home and said, look, you are a failure. And he said, no, I cannot be a failure. And he began to read. At the end of the day, the man owes a particular youth meeting to empower the youth in the stadium. He became the fourth richest man in Australia. And he wrote a book, Miss Philip, you are wrong. I don't know who is wrong about you. Signs and wonder will make it right now. I said, Signs and wonder will make it right right now. Now, quickly this morning, how do I operate in the supernatural? How do I operate in the supernatural? And we'll be looking at engaging the power of bold declaration. Say with me, engaging the power. A bold declaration. When you speak boldly, you command signs surely. When you speak boldly, you command signs surely. Acts 14 and verse 3. Long time, therefore, a bold day speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. When God's servant got to Kaduna, some pastors came and met him before moving to Lagos. And they said, what's your plan in this land? He said, I've come to take over. And that's what happened. What you say makes signs to follow you. Signs follow sounds. It is the sound of the word you produce that commands the signs that follows you. One other time, when the Feta Banaku was not yet completed, and it was looking like, how will it be completed? And God served by revelation. You see, you cannot see encounter with God and have encounter and not say it the way you see it. And he said, if God can make the whole world in six days, Two, I mean, uh, in six days, two months is too much. It was two months to the conclusion. And began declaring, two months, too much. Do you know when Faith Tabernacle began, when the foundation was laid? The money in the coffers was just enough to start the foundation. And you are not sure, that is every money everywhere. That's why they call it Faith Tabernacle. It is the Tabernacle that was built by faith. And from the foundation, the opening or the, or the finishing was concluded. I don't know who you are this morning. By your declaration, I see signs and wonders taking place in your life. That means you are the final say over the issues of your life. What you say over that issue determines what God confirms. What you say over that issue determines what God will register. Today, I see signs and wonders becoming your portion in the name of Jesus.
Say one more time. I am for signs and wonders. Every word of my mouth is an authority. Every word I declare is prophetic to bring about a change of situation as I have desired. So shall it be. As you speak from now, I see change taking place for you in the name of Jesus. Boldness is, to op is an open declaration of faith without doubt in your heart. It's not enough to say it, but say it with a, a bold declaration from your heart. The reason why many cannot say many things, there's nothing in their heart. It starts from morning till night, it's only FM is listening to. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Matthew 13, I'm a Matthew 3, I'm a, I'm a 12, I'm a 34. Out of the abundance of the heart, you cannot say what you don't have. You see, the word of God is like loading the, the gun with a bullet. When you release it, you are releasing it to, to bring about the expected result. When you declare the word, you are setting the word on target for your desired breakthrough. This time, I see your desired breakthrough answering in the name of Jesus. We saw what happened to David. David brought down Goliath. How? David never said he was going to fight Goliath. If you notice everything David said. In fact, David concluded the obituary of Goliath before he went to him. He said, I will cut off your head. I will give your head to the balls of the air. David was declaring the conclusion. Many of us, we, we, we explain the circumstance. Many of us, we describe the circumstance. Many of us, we illustrate the circumstance. What do you want? Your authority is confirmed when you declare it. For where the voice of the king is, there is power. So when you look at things you don't like, don't keep quiet. Say it if you want to see it. It's my prayer today. By your authority in your mouth, I see everything taking shape in your favor in the name of Jesus. Only that person say very loud, Amen. You see that in First King, First Samuel seventeen and verse thirty-two to verse fifty. It's a very long read. David began to speak. If you notice also, when they got to the battle, nobody spoke for forty days. They had drunk. This guy had experiences. They were soldiers. In fact, the reason why David did not go to the battle, he was an underage soldier. He was an underage soldier. So, going to the battle, he knew the power of bold declaration. Goliath, if you read your Bible, the Bible says, Goliath caused them in the name of his God, and they had no reply. But David came, and you see, when you declare the words, you change the air in the environment. Your house is not poor. Your business is not down. Death is not in your house until you begin to say it. When you speak life, you see life. Today, I see life in your business. I see life in your business. I see life in the work of your hand. It's, look at it. And David, that's 1 Samuel 17 and verse 32. And David said to Saul, let, let no man's heart fail. Because of, because of him, thy servant shall go and fight this Goliath. And Saul said to David, thou shalt not go against the, the Philistines to fight, to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. If you read in verse, look at verse 45. Then David said, David said to Philistines, Thou comest to me with sword and with spear and with shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of Israel, whom thou art defiled. And this day, look at the conclusion. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hands, deliver thee, and I will give your carcass to the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that God, there is God in Israel. This time, 
they will know your God indeed. I did not hear your amen at all. You are selling in a business, in your shop, and there's no customer. You can call customers. Bold declaration. You are experiencing something in your marriage. You can call what you want it to be. Stop speaking the situation. Some say all manner of things contrary. He said, let the weak say I'm strong. Don't speak weakness if you want to see strength. That is God's style. When God saw the earth, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, God did not speak the situation. God spoke the conclusion. God spoke the conclusion. The earth was without form and void. And God said, God did not say there was blackness and there was emptiness. He said, God said, let there be light. Let there be light. For you, I see signs and wonders taking place for you in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to know your bold declaration has the following power. Your bold declaration is the power to your salvation. As powerful as what Jesus came to do on this earth to save mankind, without your bold declaration, you are not saved. Most times you see when, I, when people give their life here, I say, look, go and declare, tell three, four persons that I got born again. Now listen to me. What you cannot declare cannot stay. You lose it very cheaply. The more you declare it, the more you establish it. The more you declare it, the more God confirms it. God will confirm good things in your life this time. Romans 10, verse 10, it says, with the heart of the heart, it says, it says, for with the heart man believe it, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Your prosperity and success is tied to your mouth. Joshua 1, and verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, but thou mayest observe to do that which is written therein, and it will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. It shall not depart out of your mouth. You have a very good business, very good business location, yet you are speaking negative. You are speaking like they speak. You say, there's no business in town. Everything is bad in the economy. It's not bad for you. When they shall say there's a casting down, you will say there's a lifting for me. Don't say what they say or you will see what they see. That's why you are living like a natural man. The law of the spirit is to say what God has said. What more? Your healing is tied to your mouth. You, some people you are not even saying, I, I don't know, I, I, my body is just anyhow. They need to become anyhow. Joel 3 and verse 10. Let the weak say, I am strong. You can't be strong until you declare the declaration for strength. You see, in this kingdom, it is sound that precedes signs. Sound precedes signs. Don't ever keep a closed mouth. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. If you know what happened to Job, Job chapter 3, Job, his friends came, seven friends, and they were with him. And they, the Bible said they said not a word. The moment Job began to speak, he began to speak death and destruction. Don't keep your mouth shut. One time ago, I learned our father in the Lord, Bishop David, Ugo, he had his beautiful car. And when he kicked his car in the morning, his neighbor said, Ah, your car will knock. He said, my car cannot knock. You are face to face with a teacher in the school. And he's telling you your child is dull. Give it back to him. My child is the head and not the tail. He cannot be dull. But here you are smiling. It's, it's, it's even an insult to your person. Somebody here now, right now. I hope you are hearing right now. Well, what more? What you say, some people are givers, but their mouth speaks poverty. So you wonder, why am I giving and I'm not receiving anything? Your, your mouth betrays your hand. Proverbs 13 and verse 2. Proverbs 13 and verse 2. A man shall eat of the good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressor shall eat violence. If you want to eat good, say something good. Say something good. Don't just be a giver. Say it. What more? Your protection has to do with your mouth. In that Psalm 91, it says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge 
What you say defines your protection. I will say, oh, the Lord is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Tell your neighbor, say something. Say what God says. And you'll see what God says. If you want victory over your adversary, you don't keep quiet. In Psalm 18 and verse 43, down there to verse 44, it says, I, it says when strangers shall hear of me, they shall submit. They shall come out of their hiding places. Don't keep quiet or you run like a natural man. And don't say what they say. Or you remain to see what they see. Today, somebody is changing status in the name of Jesus. We are empowered by the, with boldness by the Holy Ghost. We saw Peter. He denied Jesus. We saw that in Matthew 26 and verse 69 to verse 75. He denied Jesus. But when the Holy Ghost came, if you read Acts chapter 2, the message of Peter was fierce and bold. Acts chapter 2 from verse 22 to 27. It began preaching, quoting Psalms, quoting Joel, and declaring the word. In verse 38 to verse 41, the Bible said they were prick in their heart. And they said, man and brethren, what shall we do? Why? It was not an ordinary word. It was a word inspired by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost helped us to speak boldly, confidently, and authoritatively. The Holy Ghost helped us to speak confidently, boldly, and authoritatively. Matthew 10 and verse 20. Jesus said, When you are coming before a challenge, for it is not... He said, for it is not you that speak it, but the spirit of your father, that's the Holy Ghost, which speak it in you. The Holy Ghost empowers you to speak boldly, confidently, beyond what you can ever imagine. This season, I see somebody empowered by the Holy Ghost to speak boldly in the name of Jesus. Did I hear a lot of amen? Speaking boldly. It is empowered by the Holy Ghost. So Holy Ghost is not just for us to speak in tongues. It empowers us to speak boldly. In Acts 14 and verse, 10, verse 3, it's a long time, a long time, about them boldly speaking in the Lord. Let me say this to you. The mountains of life, the circumstance of life, wants you to keep quiet. I'm just telling you this. Every challenge of life once you're quiet. And the moment you are silenced, you are moved to failure. You are moved to perpetual inactivity. But nothing will keep you silent this time. I said nothing will keep you silent this time. That's why the Bible is speaking in that Psalms 81. God gave a commandment. It says, open your mouth wider. And I will feel it. It says, I am the Lord that brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide. And I will feel it. It says, verse 11, it says, but my people are too civilized. You know why some people don't declare? You enter a vehicle, you say, this vehicle is blessed. But you can't say it because you are too civilized. You enter your shop and say, this shop shall prosper above others. You are a student or you are a business person. I shall be the head and not the tail. You are not saying it. You want to comply and conform. That's why you remain natural. But he said, Israel will have said it. He said, if I have said it, I will have long hold down their enemies. Today, I see every contention over your life bow to you in the name of Jesus. Say so with me, I will say what God says to see what God sees. May I announce to you, everything around you hears. <laughs> you do not hear me now. Everything around you. Animate and inanimate. It has what? Yes. You know why? Everything around you that you can see is made by the world. So they respond to the world. Everything here. Micah 2 and verse, I mean 6 and verse 2. It says, hear ye all mountain. Mountains here. Your 
bank account hears, your lungs, your organ hears. But the reason why it's not answering, you have not said it long enough. This time, as you speak boldly, I see everything hearing you in the name of Jesus. Did I hear a lot of say, Amen? I say, every, your business will hear you. Your health will hear you. The work of your hand will hear you. Your marriage will hear you. Some people have destroyed their marriage with their mouth. I, I, I used to be somewhere in Delta State here. And a girl walked to me that day. He said, sir, pray for us. I said, what is it? He said, my mother has left my father. I said, why? She said, can you just speak to my mother? So I picked the phone. I spoke with the mom. I said, mom, please, please, please. Look at your son. This is your daughter. This is your son. Please. He said, sir, I'm just listening to you because you're a pastor. I said, please hear me. And she said, you see, this man, since I married him, for 26 years, he keeps telling me I will leave this house. You go leave this house one day. You go leave this house. He said, I've left. He said, I've left. I have left. Don't say what you don't mean. Say what God says. And you will see what God says. Some people may ask, why am I not here? Why am I not seeing what I say? Why is my declaration not working? Number one, it's not from your heart. When it's not from your heart, it cannot produce. Romans 10, I verse 10. Number two, when you do not say it long enough, Acts 13, uh, uh, Acts 14, and verse 3, when you do not say it long enough. Number three, when you don't say it strong enough, you say, what did you say? I shall not die but live to declare the works of God. What do you say? I am the head and not the tail. Some people, you know why they don't say it? They are ashamed. And he said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I shall be ashamed of you before my father. See, until they mock you, God cannot make you. It is your declaration that brings about your making. I see God making somebody this time. Number three, why? I, I, I many saying it and not saying it, they are not saying strongly enough. Number four, they are not speaking the word. They are speaking their own words. You ask somebody, say, heaven help those who help themselves. It is written. Where is it written? That is not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. That's the philosophy of man. What more? It's because they have no light. You cannot encounter the light of his word. In Isaiah 8 and verse 20, it said to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not after these things, it's because there's no light in them. That means there's ignorance in them. You can't catch the light of prosperity. That's why when God's servant dis discover the encounter with prosperity in the book, he said, I cannot be poor. He was saying it. Poverty was around, but it began to change level. Somebody, you are changing level this time. Can you declare what God says about you in one second? Go ahead and declare it. Declare your victory. Declare your favor. Declare what is written against what is happening. Declare it. Declare thou. The Bible says declare thou. That thou mayest be justified. Your justification is in your declaration. Declare thou Isaiah 43 and verse 26. Declare thou. For me to justify you for favor. Justify you for marriage. Justify you for progress. Justify you for longevity. Your justification is in your pro 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 proclamation. Your justification is in your declaration. Declare thou that thou may be justified. If you want to be justified for promotion, declare it. You want to be justified for longevity, declare it. Declare thou. Declare your fruitfulness. Declare your open heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, we have declared. Now listen to me. Paul was speaking about the gift of prophecy. The, the gift. He said, I wish all of you prophesy. Now what is prophecy? Prophecy is declaration. You are not praying to God. That's what many of us do. We pray to God, yes, but you declare nothing to the circumstance. When you are speaking to this plant, you are prophesying to it. Plant, I want you out of this place. It's prophecy. Ezekiel, God so told him, he said, look, if you want to see that, that value of dry bone to change, prophesy, prophesy. And as he says it, he began to see it. You will see it this time in the name of Jesus. Today is your next level banquet. 
I did not hear you at all. In Psalm 23, he said, He set a table before me in the presence of my enemy, and my cup run it over. That means there's everything for anyone the way you want it. That's what it means. A banquet is what is available for everyone the way you want it. And the good thing is, your next level is changing this time. I say you're changing next level this time. So, for you to assess next level, the word of God is the principal catapult to the next level. Every, en every entrance of your word changes your status. Isaiah 9 and verse 8, he sent the word into Jacob. And one individual, one entity became a nation and an institution. Every word that lightens you, every word that brings about revelation your way, brings about automatic change of status. That's why in 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18, as they behold him in a the glass, they are changed from shame to glory, from lack to plenty, from sickness to health. Your change is tied to your word encounter. By the word you receive this morning, I say change your story for somebody in this service. Did I hear loud as amen? I say change your story for someone here. May I announce to you in redemption, God's plan and purpose for you is advancement. God has no plan for your stagnation. It's for your advancement. Proverbs 4, 4 and verse 18. The path of the just shine more and more and more to the prophet there. Quickly this morning, keys to experiencing continuous change of level. You see, to be blessed is one level. Genesis, Genesis 12 and verse 3 and 4. God said to Abraham, I will bless you. To be a blessing, the second level. He said, and I will make you a blessing. That's an answer, a second level. In Deuteronomy 1 and verse 11. He said, the Lord of thy father bless you a thousand times. That's another level. A thousand times blessing. In Genesis 24 and verse 60. He said, the Lord of thy mother bless you a million times. That is another level. And there is an overflowing level. Deuteronomy 8, 28 and verse 1, it says, and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. May you receive that level of blessing. So for you to change levels, you need to key into this following. Number one, what are the keys? We must give, we must begin to see every instruction of scriptures as an examination to pass. Anytime God is speaking to you in the service, write the thing he wants you to do. As, I, as I'm speaking to you right now, there's an instruction that's coming behind the word. The Bible says, hear instruction and be wise. That's what the Bible says. Hear instruction and be wise. Scriptural instruction make us wise. God will always send instruction your way. They attest if you respond to it. In 1 Kings 17 and verse 13. That woman was inside farming and she received instruction from the prophet. He said, make for me first. And instead of scarcity throughout the farming, she began to supply. She took it as an examination. Number two, we must engage. We're talking about five keys to experiencing continuous change of levels. Number two, we must engage with instructions of scriptures to become a lifestyle. That is, engage this instruction. Don't just write it. Obey, that's what it means. We must engage it. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 to 3. He said, if you hearken diligently to the instruction of the word of God, the Lord will set you on high above all the nations. If you want to leave failure to success, there's an instruction. Now listen to me. If you want to leave average, some people like to be average. They just like it. If you want, that means you, you are just lost in the crowd. But if you want to live average to excellence, there's an instruction. Go and study Daniel. There's an instruction. Show me a man that is diligent in his business. He shall not stand before me, amen. He shall stand before kings. There's an instruction. You want to have a peaceful marriage. There is an instruction. Husband, love your wife. Whether, she, you don't, whether she's beautiful or not, love her. 
Wife, submit yourself to your husband. It's an instruction. You are not obeying the man. You are not obeying the woman. You are obeying God in order to see the next level in your marriage. You are not a giver and you want to see an open heaven. You're wasting your time. As long as they are remaining, this is instruction for harvest. Sit time and harvest time shall not cease. You want to leave the, the terror of the terror of the Pharaoh of life. It says, You shall serve the Lord your God, it will bless your bread and your waters. It's that means service will bring about turnaround. Quickly, number three, we must continue to give ourselves to God and the interest of his kingdom. So serving God makes us enjoy supernatural change of level. You can't serve God and bow before men. You can't serve God and not be served by your world. Serving God. In that Job 36 verse 11, it says, if they obey and serve me, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Number four, we must continue to trust God. That is, show your faith in God. In that Psalm 125, and verse 1, it said, They that trust the Lord shall be like Mount Zion, that cannot be moved, but abide forever. That means you are walking on the premise of scriptures to see it come to pass. You are holding on to the word of God. And number five, we must continue to celebrate the faithfulness of God for what, for, for the sin of God, what he has done in our life. The Bible speaking about, about Sarah. In Hebrew 11 and verse 11, it says, And Sarah received strength to conceive. When she judged God faithful. Never see God as working against you. I met a young man while we went out this, this last week throughout. And it's, the guy said, I don't want to go to church. I have not been going to church. I don't want to go to church. He may be in this service. But I told him to see me today. And I spoke with him. He said, look, something happened to me in my former church. And I just don't want God at all. I said, because of one man and the whole, uh, maybe your church, do you want to lose God? He said, I believe in God, but I don't want to go to church. Don't reject God and don't have as passion against God. Judge God faithful. The reason why you woke up this morning and why you did not die overnight is because God still believes in you. You are God's project on the earth. Wave your hand and just celebrate God for the blessing we have received this morning. Go ahead and celebrate him. For the blessing we have received this morning. Go and glorify him. Let him hear you this morning. Thank him for his faithful. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That's what he says. He will never abandon you. He will never abandon you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I'd like to pray for somebody in this service this morning. God loves you. And God wants you. The Bible says, It rains rain upon the wicked and upon the righteous. His mercy is what brought you to this service this morning. He wants to bring you out of every mess. In that Lamentation 3 and verse 20 to 21, it says, mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Somebody's here this morning telling me, Pastor, I have gone through all the mess of life. I have been religious. I have a Christian name, but I know I don't have God. My life is full of mess. Jesus can turn your mess to a miracle. I don't know what I'm talking about this morning. I'd like to pray for that man. You're saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want to live a supernatural life. I don't want to be limited by the limitations around me. That person, put your right hand on your chest. I will pray with you. That woman, that man, put your right hand on your chest. I will pray with you. That boy, that girl, put your right hand on your chest. I will pray with you. Now, with your right hand on your chest, turn to your feet. Stand to your feet, that man. Stand to your feet, that woman. God bless you this morning. There is no time to look back. It's time to make a decision for Jesus. It's time to reverse all that is contrary. Now, stand to your feet, that man, that woman. Now, God bless you. I can see so many. So many are standing right now. Pick your bags and your Bible. I'd like you to come right here close to me. I want to pray for you close to the altar. Jesus is here waiting for you. Wherever you are, Jesus is here waiting for you. Church, I told you I still clapping. There is great joy in heaven over one man, over one soul that is saying yes to Jesus. Somebody is sitting now and is wondering, well, I will go when everybody is gone. Don't let somebody take your place this morning. There's a place for you. A place of salvation. A place of turnaround. The Bible said today, now is a time of salvation. Today is the accepted time. There may not be another tomorrow. There may not be another time. Ah, somebody is just standing up 
and somebody is between standing and not standing, will you choose to vote for Jesus or choose to vote for darkness? Choose Jesus this morning. Make your way right here this morning. If you are coming, do that fast. God bless you. God bless you. You are the only one. Your seat is still reserved. You are the only one. Your seat is still reserved. Reserved for this flight. Reserved for the flight of salvation. You are the only one. Praise the Lord. 43 years ago in February, I stepped out like this as a small boy in secondary school. And I have never been the same. Today is your own turning point. That same kind of prayer they pray with me that day is what I will pray with you. And I'd like you to believe God from the heart. Now put your right hand on your chest. And just talk to Jesus in a minute. In a minute just tell him, Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive me. Now while you do that, say this prayer with me. Say with me, Lord Jesus. One more time, Lord Jesus. Today, I recognize you as my Lord and my Savior. Save me. Deliver me from the power of sin and Satan. Cleanse me by your blood. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Father, we pray for this precious soul this morning. You brought them here by your grace. Let your grace keep them. Every shackles of hell and darkness over this destiny is broken by this declaration this morning. Receive the peace, the joy, and the love of the Son of God today. In Jesus' mighty name. Say with me, I'm now born again. I'm now a child of God. Amen. Now, I want you to do me a favor. Tell three persons. Before the end of the day, tell them I receive a miracle in church. If they say what? Tell them I receive Jesus in my heart as my Lord and Savior. I congratulate you this morning. Now, because you're special to us, there's a place reserved for you this way. Look at the way I'm pointing. I'd like you to, church, I taught. I taught. You are rejoicing with heaven this morning. I told you are rejoicing with heaven this morning. Glory to God. For that great harvest this morning, put those hands together again for Jesus. For everyone that went out throughout the soul winning sacrifice, the Lord God of heaven, the Lord God of this commission, rewards you abundantly in the name of Jesus. These are all evidences of your outing. The Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Let us do well to make sure we follow them up. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Now, as we run up this service quickly, we'd like, if you are here this morning for the first time on a Sunday morning, we'd like you to please get out, I mean, uh, pick your bag and your Bible and whatever you came to church with and came, come make your way right here towards the altar. God bless you. God bless you this morning. Everyone that is watching for the first time on a Sunday morning. Meanwhile, while they come, we are where some of us came after we've taken our offering. We'd like you to bring out that seed in your hand and label it. Also, today is our transport seed offering. Quite a number are brought from very far and near just to Sunday service. It is because you make it happen. You can make it happen the more. So on that envelope, write transport on it. Make sure you write transport. If you can't write transport, just write T, a big T. When it gets there, they will know T. Just write T, there's transport. The Lord bless you. Now bring out that seed. That seed in your hand is blessed. As you lay the seed before him, God of heaven will turn it to harvest your way. Harvest of your miracle. Harvest of your finances. The seed is blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. We'd like to remind us, please let's follow us with our convert. The Lord bless you as you do that. Make sure you direct them to Believers Foundation School. Tomorrow, 4 p.m., 4.30 p.m., there's Believers Foundation School. Immediately after this service, we have the baptism. Water baptism is taking place immediately after this service. We'd like, we like us to also know that there's provision for pastors. There's pastors on duty. You need, you need counseling, you need prayer, especially by pastors. We have pastors on duty for us. If you have a medical concern, 
and you want to see our medical team, whatever it is, we have the medical team waiting for you. Whatever the need is, everyone in the first time, God bless you. You just talk to the officials attending to you. They will give you what it is for your, for your to need to be met appropriately in Jesus' name. As it was announced during the service, if you are a retired military or paramilitary person and you are also still serving, please we like you at the, at the main office so that we will just get your details. The Lord bless you as you do that in Jesus' mighty name. We'd like to announce that Wednesday, there is no fasting on Wednesday. Some people are happy and if you're happy like me, <laughs> you are pretending not to be happy. <laughs> There's no fasting because we are celebrating the birthday of our father, Bishop David Oyediko. And as such, 5 p.m. every day from Tuesday down to Thursday, we shall be having a praise night connecting with Kingdom Land, 5 p.m. every day from Tuesday to Thursday. So join us as we celebrate. The Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. There's full flesh service on Wednesday, but there's no fasting. That's what I'm saying. So there's no communion. Just come ready to praise God and type into the grace of this commission. Now everyone in front this morning, I am so glad to receive you on behalf of Jesus this morning. And I know your desire shall be fulfilled. Just stretch your hand towards them. And ask that the good hand of the Lord rest upon them. Whatever they have desired this morning, let it answer to them. Let it answer to them. Favor, breakthrough, open doors. Answer for them. In Jesus' mighty name. Your desire is granted. As you go from here, enter into your miracle. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'd like you to just turn this way. There's a place reserved for you. You see these officials waving their hand. I'd like you to turn this way. There's a place reserved for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, earlier during the announcement, it was mentioned that churches and individuals take note of that. Uh, the, the, the link that was sent on Instagram and Facebook to send your goodwill messages to God's servant. As a church, we're going to send a goodwill message. It was done in the first service. We're going to put them together and we're going to edit them. So we're going to sing Happy Birthday as we captured by the studio and we send it over. Choir, are you ready? Before we share the goodness, we have to do that. Will you rise on your feet and give God thanks this morning? Give him thanks. Give him glory. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him glory and give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him glory and give him praise. You are blessed. This week will be your week of signs and wonders. Everywhere they have rejected you in the past, the signs and wonders in you will speak this time. They will accept you and favor you. In Jesus' mighty name. We, I will just say a word after I do that. Then we will sing the birthday song. I'm sure the choir is set. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, Pastor Adekunle 